My name is James Gore, Sonoma County Supervisor and a relentless champion of resilience. We as a community have come so far. We've gone forward over these last two years in many different areas. But the reality is, is to be able to acknowledge where you've gone forward, you gotta look back. You gotta look back to the catastrophic night that we had, October 8th and 9th of 2017. You have taken those memories, you keep them close to you. You are rebuilding your homes, you are rebuilding your communities, and you are doing it stronger. But we also have to remember that preparedness has to be an ethos, a culture that we embrace. We can never go back to that place of complacency. I thought that we would be spared. I was sure of it, actually, <laughs> but um, that we were not, and it was pretty shocking. As I sat in and put on my headset, the lines just started ringing and they didn't stop. Uh, I had co-workers sitting right next to me that, that lost their homes while they sat in that chair. People were calling looking for loved ones that they couldn't get a hold of. Um, everything from, I smell smoke, is there a fire? To I'm completely surrounded in fire. You know, there were, there were fires everywhere, all over the county. We didn't know where was safe and we knew that we had to get out and um, we gathered all of our stuff, frantically got all the animals, thankfully, into the cars, and, uh, and got out of there in six minutes. And uh, I was six, seven months pregnant at the time, so I couldn't really take any, any risks. It was a community that was not prepared for what was happening. Um, people had never considered evacuation routes. They didn't have preparedness kits. Because when a disaster hits, if you're not able to evacuate and you have to shelter in place, you have to turn to your neighbors and help each other. But you have to be prepared first in order to be able to do that. The thing to acknowledge is that none of us knew where to start. We got hit by a catastrophic natural disaster and people were put to the edge and systems broke. What we've been doing since then is taking the heat, the energy of that event, and putting it back into rebuilding our community. So what I saw after that are people that became champions in disaster preparedness. Um, you know, we had the birth um, of these wonderful block captains. The county supervisor found block captains for different communities and brought them together on a weekly basis. And really was able to help disseminate really vital information. Um, and it was real, uh, the block captain for each community's job to get that out for their neighborhoods. I think that really helped. I started going to their meetings and found that they weren't just surviving, they were thriving and they were trying to help their community. So as they learned of problems in recovery, they tried to help each other. And so now I think that as, as a community, we're, we're turning from just recovering to preparing and becoming resilient. I'm often asked, two years after those fires, are we better prepared? The answer is yes. But the other question is, can we still be more prepared? And the answer to that is, hell yes. We've dug deep into our institutional mechanism. We've changed the entire way that the County of Sonoma works, created a resiliency framework for us with 215 actions. We have people organized throughout our communities, not only the block captains, but we moved that over into COPE teams, citizens organized to prepare for emergencies. We're helping people by putting money on the table so that they can harden their homes. So that if those who weren't burnt out are concerned about living in a high fire area, they can take tangible action to protect them themselves and also have a benefit to their neighbors and those around them. We're out there working every day. We've enhanced our chipper programs. We put more money into fire services so that they can be out during red flag warnings to stop fires quickly under the worst kind of wind conditions. We've also gone directly into one of the issues that the community screamed at us during those fires. They wanted better, more enhanced alert and warning systems. We have tested our two systems over the last two years. We have done more 
and created a feedback loop that has created a bigger response than we've seen from any other county in the nation so far. Can it be better? Yes. Each time you try and improve one of these things, what you do, especially if you test it with the community, you realize that more needs to be done, that the test shows you where the imperfections are. So this is continually the process, not just on the recovery, but over to rebuild and over to resilience, which is the same message over and over. The only real progress is imperfect, relentless progress. We are on that mission. We're achieving more every day. It ain't gonna stop. A firebomb comes through all the way around and encircles this entire campus. Um, and everything is devastated, and yet the campus survives. It's an amazing miracle that this place survived. We called it the, uh, the oasis in the middle of destruction. The most important thing was bringing the children back to this campus, obviously where it was safe, because it would normalize life for the children, back to a normal routine as much as possible. Because we know in education, the most important thing for children is to have a normal life. You know our students still have um, concerns and issues. It was really evident last year when we were had to close school because of the smoke from the Paradise Fire. Um, a lot of trauma was rebuilt up for our students, and understandably so. Having to have already gone through that process, thinking that all of a sudden the, this fire is back again and we're going to be displaced. And so we've obviously had emotional issues for students. We've got our counseling department, it's fantastic. They've worked with our students and they continue to do so. And I know this is be ongoing for the next five years, it's not going to go away. You know, PTSD is, is real, anxiety is real, we're dealing with it every day. Um, that, I feel, has been the hardest thing to struggle with for us as individuals and as a family. Um, that's something that you're not really prepared for, and uh, that a lot of that fallout doesn't happen right away. It's, um, you know, when you're not, when you're out of survival mode and you're just trying to live your life normally again. You really find out if you're resilient or not. And, um, you know, at some point, there's times where it's really difficult and you just have to, you know, know that that's normal and it's a phase and you'll get through. I have to give credit to our entire little court that we had. We had 10 houses here. Um, we had only lived here for two years before the fires and um, didn't know our neighbors a ton, not, you know, nothing really super well and uh, after the fires that brought everyone together and actually like after really meeting our neighbors we realized that it's like we have to rebuild like this is where we want to be like it's this is where our home was but now it's more like home with all of our neighbors i'm really grateful for some of the friendships that came from this i've you know we feel really close to um, several people and have spent more time with um, new people in our lives and it's developed into some really strong bonding. It's been a relief to do it together. A lot of, most of the people around our area had lost their homes, and once they were able to come back in the store, they were running into people that they hadn't seen yet during the fire. People were hugging each other, people were crying. I mean, we were crying with the customers. I mean, it was, it was very emotional. We had to move the picture, all the desks, all the furniture, all the student work, we had to move this campus in 24 hours to two different campuses. Now, we didn't have the manpower to do that. So, the Bayside Church, which is over on Sebastopol Road, has a sister church in um, Sacramento. They brought in over 100 volunteers, and they came over, and literally, we picked up the school in one day and moved it to, and put it in, put classrooms in place within 24 hours. That is what community is all about. The good parts about the 
homes now is that a lot of the homes are being built and some of the people are moving back in. So that's a good feeling that people are coming, customers coming in, hey, good to see you, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, we just put our frame under our house or hey, we just put in the windows or you're high-fiving them and stuff like that. And getting to see as they progress with the house, you know, they're, they're getting happier the closer they get to moving back in their houses. And sometimes like the last weekend, somebody comes, hey, it's my first weekend back. Finally moved into my house. It's our first time shopping for the refill in the house back up. And so it's good to see, see that happen. We have a special present for the students in that we, we got the buses, we loaded the buses up. Fire department, sheriff's department, everybody led the kids back to the campus. And it brought an emotional piece from our parents and families about, again, coming back to some kind of normalcy in our lives, those routines that we wanted. And that was a huge, huge moment, I think, for our community. We're taking a strategic approach to disaster preparedness. And what it is really is a shifting in how we think, but we have to have a, a culture of preparedness. And so we're taking a strategic approach by teaching individuals what their role is, giving them the tools to, to prepare their home, um, but then bigger than that, plugging them into um, programs such as COPE that are up and functioning so that they can help their neighborhood become prepared. So I believe that the culture is shifting. You know, I believe between individuals and governments and uh, nonprofits and everybody getting involved in understanding what part they play, uh, we can build resiliency. We went from fire victims to fire survivors, and now we're fire thrivers. All of you out there that have gone through this lived experience have inspired us to follow your lead. Now, two years later, all that good work has created a big to-do list of more work that we have to do and more accountability that we have to hold amongst each other. And I love that work. You all are loud. You are the ones who are leading our community. I thank you for that, and I look forward to traveling this path with you.